Thank you for this opportunity uh, to make a presentation at this year's Africa Jazz Forum uh, in Blanta, Malawi. My name is uh, Barnabas Chitalu. I'm the technical advisor for the Royal Jersey uh, Agriculture and Horticulture uh, Society in Zambia. The title of my presentation is uh, Building a Resilient Smallholder Dairy System in Zambia. Next. Uh, currently, uh, Jay's Overseas Aid is funding a, a dairy development project in Zambia uh, that is called the Jersey Breed Focused Dairy Development. Uh, this project started in uh, last year in November. And uh, the goal of this project is to increase smallholder uh, farmers' resilience and income, and also contribute to a sustainable uh, dairy system. We are targeting uh, three districts in Zambia. Uh, this is uh, uh, Central Province of Zambia, Lusaka Province, and Southern Province. And we, the target beneficiaries are actually 8,100 uh, smallholder farmers that are having uh, dairy production challenges. We are also going to also improve extension services through uh, uh, training AI technicians, uh, paravets, and also livestock extension officers to make them effective. The project is implemented by a consortium of partners uh, with the Royal Jersey being the lead uh, organization. Then we also have the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock uh, as support and enabling partner because this project is contributing to uh, the development of the National Livestock Development Policy. Then here in Zambia, the in-country implementer is Adra Zambia, but we also have other support partners like the Dairy Association of Zambia, uh, which is currently working with the milk collection centers uh, in Zambia. And we are also going to work with the Head Book Society that are going to help us uh, promote the, the Jersey breed. In the UK, there are also other support partners like Otherwise that are going to help us uh, promote milk hygiene and quality, especially to control mastitis. We are also going to work with the Pan Livestock Services at the University of Reading uh, to help, help us set up a, a genetic resource management information system. Next. The project uh, key target outcomes are to increase income of the, uh, the smallholder farmers, either through the milk sales or also the sale of livestock or related dairy pro products. Uh, we also want to increase uh, consumption of uh, milk, uh, nutrition at household level. Currently, uh, the per capita consumption of uh, milk is 36 liters uh, uh, in, in Zambia, as compared to uh, Kenya, which is at 180 liters. So the consumption of milk in Zambia is, is very low and we want to double uh, milk consumption. Uh, the project, the other project outcome is of course, to come up with a dairy genetic evaluation index that is going to contribute to promoting a sustainable dairy system in Zambia that is going to inform uh, the dairy development policy in the smallholder farmers. And it's one of the reasons why we are working with the, uh, the Minister of Fisheries and Livestock. The current, uh, just to share the current uh, situation of the smallholder dairy in Zambia, yeah, uh, the dairy head is just estimated just over 50,000 uh, uh, dairy animals, and 75% of these are actually owned by commercial farmers. Yeah, uh, the major dairy breeds that we have here, in, in, that we have in Zambia, is uh, Frisians. Uh, the jerseys and also crosses with the local or indigenous breeds. 
the daily value chain has only an excess of 15,000 uh, farmers. Uh, and farmers here, I mean both commercial, uh, emergent farmers, and also smallholder farmers. So 96% of these are small uh, smallholder farmers, uh, but they mainly supply the milk in the informal sector. So the bulk of the milk in the formal sector is coming from the commercial and emergent farmers, which is stands at 25%. So only 25% uh, milk uh, is formally marketed by the smallholder farmers. And uh, of course, these the smallholder farmers, they usually aggregate, aggregate, they sell their milk through the established milk collection centers, especially those along the, the line of rail. The price of milk uh, quality uh, in Zambia is, of course, based on the somatic cell uh, count. And uh, currently, the small order farmers are actually doing very well. Their milk is graded either A or B, and that's good for, uh, for, 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 for income. Yeah. Like I said earlier, uh, one of the project outcomes is to promote milk consumption because uh, per capita milk consumption is quite low in Zambia. It's at 36 uh, liters. Uh, if you compare with the Kenya, which is at 108 uh, liters per capita. So this information is provided by the Dairy Association of Zambia. Next slide, please. Yeah, now just to appreciate the, the challenges that small order dairy uh, that are affecting the smallholder dairy in Zambia. Uh, there is low milk production and, and dairy productivity because most of the smallholder farmers are actually uh, milking the local or indigenous breeds that are less productive. Yeah. Then the source of quality breeding animals, quality dairy breeding animals is also a challenge for them. Uh, because of access to effective artificial insemination services and also the equipment and even logistics like liquid nitrogen. So that affects uh, a, a sustainable access to uh, dairy genetics. Also, there's uh, inadequate extension support services, especially from, from the government. And so farmers lack, they don't have access to reliable artificial insemination services and even climate smart dairy husband practices. The animal health services are also a challenges due to uh, ineffective extension uh, services, especially in the remote areas of Zambia. Another big challenge is also uh, livestock diseases. Uh, tick-borne diseases, especially East Coast fever, anaplasma, babesia, those are very common in Zambia, and uh, they actually cause a lot of mortality in the dairy animals. Also, the challenge of mastitis and other diseases uh, like lumpy skin disease. Also in Zambia, I think uh, the smallholder farmers have very little uh, capacity to access proper financing for for their dairy uh, to to improve and grow their dairy, so that is also a big challenges. And the projects that are there also they phase out uh, too early before the project the dairy project can become sustainable. Next slide, please. So other challenges also include. Uh, Availability of quality pastures, uh, fodder for, 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 for the animals. And uh, this is called the, 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 the linear system that farmers sometimes they use community grazing areas uh, uh, to, to, to graze their animals. So they don't have title to the land. Therefore, of pasture is quite limited yeah and water for obvious reasons i think the climate the effect of climate change 
is affecting the reliable source of water for, for the dairy animals. Uh, also farmers, they depend very much on the, they are seasonal milk producers, okay? Because they, they are not able to produce uh, uh, milk throughout the year because of the challenges of uh, pastures, like I said. Uh, and this makes it very difficult for them to negotiate with the processors on a, on a, on a good price for, for, for their products. The other challenge also is uh, uh, the management of the milk collection centers, the governance and management is also not very attractive to most of the farmers. They don't see a lot of benefits coming from the milk collection centers uh, due to poor governance of them of those dairy cooperatives. And the participation of women and youth is also uh, quite low. The other challenge is um, smallholder farmers don't have a reliable uh, uh, information system where they can uh, get information on the best practices in dairy management because there is no system for uh, dairy data collection at, at, at the moment. Next. Okay. Yeah, despite all those challenges, there are a lot of opportunities uh, to build a vibrant smallholder dairy system in Zambia. Uh, we have vast agriculture land, potential for dairy production. Uh, currently, Zambia is sitting on 60% potential agriculture land. Okay, and 15% of that is what is utilized. So there's vast land to, uh, to promote dairy. And there's also a potential ready market, whether in country and also in the region where the dairy product, products are very in very high demand. The government is also very supportive of, uh, of the sector. Um, Royal Jersey overseas actually signed uh, the dairy under the dairy for development project we signed an agreement with the minister of fisheries and agriculture uh, to promote the dairy, the dairy sector so that only shows uh, the government support for uh, for investment in the sector then there are also various opportunities uh, to, to to promote the the dairy sector whether it's in breeding or feed supply uh, artificial insemination, transportation of dairy products and processing and marketing. So there are various inv investment opportunities that uh, to, to, to promote the dairy sector in Zambia. Then there's also formal uh, stakeholders collaboration. There's a well-established network of, of, of stakeholders, which is uh, actually coordinated by the Dairy Association of Zambia again uh, to support the, the sector. And the, just to emphasize that there's a huge potential for uh, genetic improvement and supply of breeding stock, uh, because Zambia is sitting on 3 million beef cattle that can be used for, uh, for cross uh, breeding to, to, to improve um, dairy animals and milk production in the country. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, so there's a lot of potential uh, for to promote, a, to build a resilient smallholder dairy uh, sector in Zambia with all those opportunities that I've highlighted. Uh, so the Royal Jersey Agriculture and Horticulture Society uh, will continue promoting the Dairy for Development uh, project in Zambia and the uh, I will take this opportunity to make a, an announcement that the next uh, Africa Jazz Forum conference in 2025 uh, will be held in Zambia and you are all welcome. Thank you so much for listening.